but there's the sign. We're here today at Gillespie Airport. We're going to be doing a story on aerial advertising, banner towing. I'll have the pilot introduce himself and tell you what he's going to do. My name is Doug Lumger with Aerial Advertising. I'm going to demonstrate a banner pickup for you. I'll taxi the plane out to the end of the runway, tell the tower I want the special takeoff for a banner pickup, and um, make a short takeoff, deploy the grappling hook, swoop down, pick up the banner, and climb straight out. Since one picture is worth 10,000 words, let's just show you what he's going to do. This is the banner. Most people would call it a sign, but it's a banner. They're preparing to hook it up, and their plane is ready to taxi out and take off with it. What they do is they spread the banner out on the grass next to the runway, and the airplane taxis out, takes off, throws out a three-pointed hook like an anchor, and catches the banner between two sticks, like football goal posts. When he pulls up, it looks like he missed it. And everybody thinks, oh, he missed it. And then all of a sudden, the banner jumps up off the ground. It's a very eye-catching procedure. This is the little golf cart that they use. Notice that they have handheld walkie-talkie radios. This is the banner spread out on the grass between the runway and the taxiway. And they're going to put up two poles with a little rope between them. It looks very much like the goal posts in a football game. Here's one pole going up with a red flag on the top and the other one with a red flag on the top. And if you look closely, you can see the rope between them. And as the airplane comes over, he throws out a three-pointed hook, like a grappling hook, throws it out of the airplane and catches this rope. If you'll see the flags, we've got a pretty good wind today. It's probably 13, 14, 15 knots, but it's uh, out of the west, so it's due east. This is runway 27, which is uh, exactly east-west. The banner plane is taxiing out onto the runway now. You can see we have another plane coming in to land on the left, the white one. Now there's two runways here. They're side by side, parallel. The white plane that you see coming in for a landing is on the left, and the banner towing airplane is going to be taking off on the right. So they're not on the same runway. As a matter of fact, you can see a plane taxiing on the right also. Here's our banner plane taxiing out. He immediately makes the pickup. Watch closely. No hesitation. He immediately goes in and makes the pickup. There's the sign. If you look closely, you can see the nylon rope trailing behind the plane attached to the banner. He's coming around the pattern now. This is what we call downwind. 
and he's turning on to base. These planes can fly at uh, 1,000 feet above ground level or inhabited areas. He's coming across now, right directly above the camera. Here's the tow plane. Look closely and see if you can see the rope. There's the rope. You can see the sunshine reflecting on it. And the banner. He's going to drop the banner. Watch the banner. There's the release. The banner comes down. The airplane immediately makes a sharp turn to the left, a sharp turn to the right, and makes his landing on the runway. Kids, do not try this at home. This is for professionals only. And he's down. This is, of course, a tail dragger. So he lands on the two main gear and then lets the speed bleed off until the tail sinks on its own. The tail wheel on a steerman is not steerable. It's not a steerable tail wheel. And he's making S turns because in a tail dragger you can't see what's in front of you. So you have to make S turns so that you can tell where you're going and what's in front of you when they created the tricycle landing gear the plane was level and it eliminated that problem but this is a tail dragger and it has to make S turns there's the pilot he's waving at us good job There are two banner towing planes here, this red and yellow one, and as he taxis in, you'll see the other one, which is green and yellow. This one isn't actually red. It's half red and half orange mixed. It's red, orange, and yellow. The ground man is guiding him in to his parking spot. The green and yellow one is a very bright green. And watch Joe's hand signals. Now we're ready for another pickup. This is a clipped wing stearman. You notice the wings are shorter. They're clipped. Here's the taxi out. Rotating and liftoff. Steep, building up power, and immediately over for the pickup. Here he comes. Do you see the banner? Yes, there it is. It looks like he misses the banner because it doesn't jump up, up, up off of the ground for several seconds. So frequently you think he's missed it. There's a shot directly overhead, and here's the banner. There's the release, and the banner is down.
Notice how much shorter these wings are. The original Stearman, which is the, the red, orange, and yellow model, was built by Stearman, and then he sold out to Boeing, and then it became the Boeing Stearman. These were used as primary trainers for both the Army and the Navy. In the Navy, they were all painted solid yellow, called the SNJ, and uh, the pilots called them the Yellow Peril. You can see the difference in the wings here. Now see the longer wings on the uh, red, orange, and yellow model. Long, rounded wings. This is the earlier model. Originally, uh, the Stearmans were painted silver and gray, and they were civilian-type airplanes. And later, when they, the military purchased them, they started painting them yellow and uh, blue and yellow with stars on the wings. But the original Stearman airplane was silver and gray. These bright colors were used for barnstorming and uh, five minutes for five dollars when they used to give airplane rides. And then many Stearman airplanes became crop dusters. At one time, I, I was in partnership with another fellow, and we were going to be crop dusters with a Stearman airplane. But helicopters came in and replaced airplanes with crop dusting. Here we go for another pickup. That, that was a miss. He did miss that one. What do you do when you miss? You go around and try a second time. Now he could have been six inches too high and the hook didn't catch the rope. So we're talking here about a, a very small measurement that the airplane and, and the hook could have been five or six inches too high. But I'll guarantee you that he's going to come in low next time and he won't be high the second time around. So watch and see how low he comes in this second pass. He's turning from base onto final. He's setting up his glide ratio. He wants to be about six feet off of the ground when he comes through this time. He's traveling at about 70 miles an hour. Here he comes. Let's watch this pickup. Notice he slowed it down very slow. And look how low he is. There's the banner. Good show, Bruce. Thanks, thanks. Get out of your gear and climb out so we can tell the audience what you're doing.
tell our audience, first of all, how much does that banner weigh? Well, it, uh, usually they don't weigh more than 50 pounds. We've never actually weighed them, but uh, I, I imagine the average one's maybe around 30 pounds. Pretty light. You can carry it over your shoulder when it's all rolled up. How can a banner that big be so light? What's it made of? It's made out of a ripstop nylon. It's a thin, uh, a thin nylon, thinner, a little thinner than a uh, sailcloth. Uh, with my experience in parachute jumping and hot air balloons, I know what ripstock nylon is. Uh, the, the banner pickup uh, is a special trick or a special talent. Would you tell the audience what you do in a banner pickup? Okay, well, we have a hook um, inside of the airplane, like a grappling hook that the knights used to throw over the castle walls, you know, only it's a little bit lighter than that. And we toss it out the cockpit, and it's attached down here to a release hook on the tail with a, about a 20-foot uh, wire or cable. So you actually, you carry it in the cockpit and you, you throw it out? Right. We have it attached at that end, and then the hook itself is in the cockpit. After takeoff, get a, about 20 feet up and just chuck it out. <laughs> and then it's trailing behind the airplane. Okay, then the, the banner is laid out on the ground and the rope that tows the banner is looped up over a couple of poles. And as we come by over those poles with the hook behind the airplane, the hook snares the rope and we pull up nice and steep so that the banner gets lifted off the ground instead of dragging along the ground. What kind of speed are you flying at when you make the pickup? Uh, between 60 and 80 knots. It's um, it kind of depends on the wind and, and a few other things, but it's usually over 60 and under 80. And then do you tow at the same speed? After we, after we accomplish the pickup, then we want to tow just as slowly as we can because it minimizes wear and tear on the banner. Uh, so we tow near stall speed. We're around 40 knots indicated. And what altitude do you tow at? Okay, uh, we have to be a minimum of 1,000 feet above the highest obstacle within 2,000 feet to satisfy FAA regulations over a congested area. So. We, we adhere to that, and then other than that, we're as low as we can so people can read it. Now, out over the ocean, where we're not over a congested area beyond the surf line, then we can get down to 500 feet above the water. And, of course, that enables people on the beach to read it better, so the, that's why the beach is such a popular place to do banner towing. How far can this banner be seen or read from? It's designed to be read from a quarter mile away, which is about uh, 1,300 feet. So if we're at 1,000 feet, people should be able to read it just fine. Is there any particular reason for using a Stearman other than it's one of my favorite airplanes? Well, of course, the, that has something to do with it. The nostalgia value makes it uh, more uh, appealing to the customer. And also, the, the, this is not the original Stearman engine, which was 225 horse. This is a 450 horse engine, and the extra power enables us to tow nice long banners. And if the, if the customer wants to have a lot to say, then we can say it for him. Are there other airplanes used for banner towing? Yes, uh, there's uh, L-19 bird dogs are used. That's an old uh, military surplus Cessna. Uh, and then some people use Cessna 182s. Some people will use a Champion uh, or a Decathlon Cetabria, a Cetabria, or a Scout, which is a, a more powerful Cetabria that's not aerobatic. Cetabria is aerobatic spelled backwards. <laughs> now, when you miss the sign, even Willie Mays dropped a ball once in a while. When, when you miss the sign, what do you do? Well, um, first thing I do is look back and see if the hook is still on. We have a weak link that's designed to break in case too much tension is on the hook, and that way it just breaks the weak link instead of pulling the plane down. Okay, so the uh, first thing I do is I look back and see if the hook is still there and it's deployed properly. And if it is, then I just circle around and wait and see if they're going to get the, if it just knocked the rope, sometimes it just knocks the rope off the poles and doesn't catch it. Sometimes I miss entirely. But uh, basically just circle around and make another pass at it. Now, when I was a boy, I can remember seeing newsreels of people being picked up like this uh, in World War II. Uh, was the I remember on a James Bond movie, a big uh, cargo plane with a big uh, fork thing, and he sends up a, a balloon on a cable, and it just yanks him right out of the life raft. Yeah. Well, in the South Pacific, I saw newsreels, and they were picking up uh, wounded people like this. Uh, did they have banner towing like this before World War II? That's before my time. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, aerial, the aerial advertising that I remember is smoke riding, and... Uh, if I remember correctly, you're about ready to start smoke riding in addition 
to banner towing. That's true. Uh, we do have a, a smoke tank installed in this airplane, and we're getting going through the final stages of getting certified, and then we got to go up and practice making letters. You mentioned the word certified. Can any pilot fly a, a banner towing airplane? Well. Before you can do anything for hire as a pilot, you need to have a commercial pilot certificate, which is you have to first get your private pilot certificate and then acquire additional experience and skill and take an additional written test and an additional flight test and you get a commercial pilot certificate, which is not the same as what airline pilots have. They have airline transport pilot certificates. But you need a commercial pilot certificate to do anything. First of all, you get your student pilot's license. Then you get your private pilot's license. Then you get a commercial license. Right. Then you can fly a banner towing airplane? You can, do, you can do a banner towing or crop dusting or pipeline patrol or any kind of flying for hire. And before you can tow banners, you have to get a waiver from the FAA because they have a regulation that you're not supposed to tow anything. Or, or throw anything out? That could cause, un actually, you're not supposed to cause hazard to persons or property on the surface. So if, you're, if you can demonstrate that whatever you threw out wasn't a hazard, I suppose it's legal. <laughs> And, and, of course, a, a three-pointed hook wouldn't be a hazard, right? Oh, no. <laughs> There's the banner. I hope you've learned something today. I have. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. I have. This is Captain Fred, your host for Aviation Theater, saying happy landings. <laughs>